Hey there folks, Paul Markle from Student of the Gun and today in this box I have the PX9 Generation 3 Duty Model Pistol. This is a 9mm handgun. It's relatively new. It's from a company called SDS Imports and I'm going to do a thousand round torture test with this gun. I'm not going to do your average torture test. Well, it, probably not your average torture test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a thousand rounds, several accessories. I'm going to go out and I'm going to challenge myself and the gun. We're going to do some training. We're going to do innumerable drills and we're going to see how this gun performs under realistic circumstances. Now, this is brand new. I just picked this up, just got it out of the box. I disassembled it and I lubed it with EDC CLP. I'm gonna take this with me to the range and probably every 200 to 300 rounds or so, I'll take the slide off and I'll put some lube on it. What do I have for accessories? I have a crossbreed holsters drop slide, an outside of the waistband holster, and I've got a matching dual magazine carrier. Uh, this is a full forge gear bag and it's filled with magazines. It's filled with, I've got 10 fully loaded PX9er magazines in here ready to go. Plus, I'm gonna put my accessories in there and so forth. And what else do I have? Last but not least, I have a set of Champion headphones. What I really like about these headphones is that they are Bluetooth compatible and I can pair them to my phone and listen to some boss tunes while I'm shooting. So let's get out to the range. Let's get to shooting. Yeah, yeah, I know. Loading magazines, loading magazines. Okay, folks, we've come to the end of the thousand round torture test, and I'll give you the summation first. The gun didn't break. Didn't have any problems. I know some of you haters are going to be disappointed. You're like, what do you mean it didn't break? You didn't have any stoppages or failures or... No, I didn't. Why? Why is that? Well, number one, the main reason that this gun functions so well is because it's chambered in 9 by 19 millimeter. Let's face facts. When you take a pistol that's 9 mil and you change it, you make it a 40 Smith & Wesson or a 357 Sig or even a 45 or whatever, you're going to have problems. That's what we experienced in the 90s and 2000s when people took perfectly functional 9 millimeter guns, even Glock did this, and started making them in different calibers, then they started having problems. Right now, in the world, not just the United States, but in the world, there are so many good, well-functioning pistols, it's almost hard to go wrong. You almost have to do it wrong on purpose. What did I do in the torture test? Well, I ran through the student of the gun one box workout. I did single-handed right, single-handed left. I did two-handed rapid fire. I did holster drills. I uh, did a drop drill where I held the gun out, chest tight, opened my hand, let it fall, hit the ground, picked it up, shot, 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 did it again. 
Then I took a bucket of water after I had dropped it on the ground a few times. It got dusty and so forth. So I dropped it in a bucket of water, pulled it out of the bucket of water, shot, shot, shot. Actually, I did that twice. Shot, shot, shot. It worked. Uh, after I did the, the bucket test, bucket test was about three or four, or maybe 500 rounds into the test. I disassembled it, brushed it out, put some lube on it, put it back together, and shot it some more. Uh, I broke it over two days. Uh, I broke it over a period of two days. Uh, the first day was a little bit windy and cold. Uh, the next day, the d following day, was really freaking cold and windy uh, with wind gusts of 30 miles an hour, so I didn't go out. I waited until uh, a third day. Then I went out. It was gorgeous. Uh, well, gorgeous for Wyoming. 50 degrees and no wind uh, and the sun out. Shot it, like I said, one-handed, holster drills, two-handed, uh, rapid fire. I moved back to 25, 35, 45, 50 yards, shooting at a half steel silhouette at 50 yards. As long as I did my part, the gun was plenty accurate enough to hit the target. I used a dozen different magazines. Uh, these are the, uh, they're from Metcar. They're made by Metcar in Italy. I used actually a dozen of these magazines. Didn't have any problems with the magazines. The ammunition I used was Wolf. It was a steel cased 115 grain full metal jacket Wolf ammo. And I know a lot of people are like, ah, oh, it's dirty and it's cheap and it's crappy and it doesn't run. It might be inexpensive and it might be a little dirty, but it runs. Out of the thousand rounds of Wolf ammo, I had no malfunctions, no stoppages, no failures to fire. Now that's really super inexpensive ammo or inexpensive for today's price. So what I did is I dug into my stash and I grabbed some of the Defiant ammunition. Uh, Defiant munitions, this is 115 grain plus B, TCX. It's a, an expanding bullet, a nickel case. So we went from the really bottom inexpensive Wolf to the rather very expensive personal defense ammunition. This is not practice stuff. This is for personal defense. And I, I shot this out of there just as, you know, kind of a little test. And I wasn't surprised that it ran without a problem. Uh, I also that I also changed out the grip panels in the back strap. The back strap and the grip panels from the factory are the medium, the medium back strap, the medium side grip panels uh, are on there from the factory. So I changed it apart in the field. All you need is one little tool to change it in the field. And I put the large one on there. I shot it with the large one and, and it was fine. I didn't have a problem with it because I have pretty good sized hands. And then I thought, you know what, I'm gonna do the opposite. So I took the large off and I put the small back strap and the small grip panels and I ran the last couple hundred rounds like that. And guess what? I didn't have any problems with that either. So. I really don't know which one I prefer, medium, small, large. Uh, the fact of the matter is, if I was going to carry this concealed, I'd probably just put the small ones on it so it has a little bit smaller of a profile. Uh, not tremendous, but it's a little bit smaller. And, and the truth of the matter is, people with big hands can shoot smaller guns, but people with small hands can't shoot bigger guns. So that's why... The uh, modern pistols allow you to change the back straps and so on and so forth. So, all in all, um, the gun ran really well. And the uh, when it was sunny, the the fiber optic sight stood out perfectly fine in the sun, as you would expect. The rear sights don't have any paint or fiber optic or any crap to distract you, so it's really easy to pick up the front sight for targets. I did a lot of moving drills. Uh, and the most important thing is I deliberately made myself press the trigger as well as I could. I tried to get a thousand really good trigger presses in. I didn't just yank on the trigger and, and blast, blast, blast into a dirt berm. I tried to make every single shot count so that hopefully by the time I was done, I would be a thousand trigger presses better than I was when I started. So ladies and gentlemen, I... All you haters out there, people who hate to, you know, hate Turkish guns or I hate Turkey and I want them all to die. Fine. Here's the deal. Um, this is made in a NATO spec facility. The gun is solid. It's not very expensive. 
Uh, it co comes with a lot of features. You can put an RMR on here if you want. You can remove these sights and put Glock style sights in there. It's a SIG pattern magazine. You get 18 of them, plus they have a 20 round bonus mag. This is the PX9 Generation 3 Duty Pistol. Put a thousand rounds through it. It didn't break. It didn't stop. It ran monotonously. <laughs> it was boringly reliable. So there you go. And like I said, I disassembled it and I cleaned it uh, twice during the, uh, the torture test and put lube on it because what are handguns? Handguns are simple machines and simple machines run the best when they're cleaned and lubricated. And if you're going to do a torture test with a dry gun on purpose, you're an idiot. So don't do that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am Paul Markle with Student of the Gun. Remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.